excited he says subhanallah i'm sure this is the place where this messenger is going to come and he was so happy and delighted so he worked very hard for this master of his and one day Another cousin came in from Al Madinah Al Munawwara. One of the Jewish people had come to see his master. And he was busy on one of the trees taking out some dates. And what happened is he heard this man say that, Oh, Al Aws and Al Khazraj, they will be destroyed. Look at them. They want to follow a man who's just come from Makkah. He's claiming to be a prophet and he's claiming to say this and that. Salman says, I got such a pleasant surprise. I shook in a way that I almost dropped off the tree. And I quickly rushed down the tree and got to my master with his cousin. And I said, what did you say? Can you repeat it? And my master gave me one smack and sent me back to work. He says, but I heard they said that he is living in Quba. So that night, very quietly, I took some dates. Why did I take dates? He says, that man in Amuriya, one of those Christian leaders told me that when the messenger comes, there will be clear signs that prove he's a messenger. He will not eat charity, but he will eat from a gift. And he will have a mark on his back, that which will be a seal of prophethood. When you see that, you know he is the prophet. So Salman al-Farisi, radiallahu anhu, he decides to take some dates. And he went to Quba. He says, I saw this messenger. I looked at him. I was so excited. And I, I said, you know, you people are not from this place. I have brought some charity that I want to give you. These are some dates and I want you to eat them. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam thanked him and accepted the charity and so on. And the Sahaba, some of them began to eat. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not eat. Why? Because it was a charity. So Salman says, okay, that's one, one sign done. So after a few days, he heard that Muhammad sallallahu shifted to Medina already. He went to Medina with some more dates and he looked at Muhammad sallallahu He says, oh, he told him, you know what? I've brought you a gift because I believe you don't eat charity. So Muhammad sallallahu took it, gave some of his companions and ate from it. So he said, okay, that's the second sign done. After a few days, there was someone who died and was being buried and Muhammad sallallahu was at Baqiya assisting in the burial. So Salman had arrived in Baqiya and he noticed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa between his clothing he was looking very hard to see that mark on his back where his shoulders are and he's trying to look where is the seal so Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa looked at him and noticed that he's trying to look at the seal of prophethood so he actually pushed his clothing off in a, in a way that the seal became clear when Salman saw it he began to weep and he kissed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he declared his shahada and this is why this person was called the seeker of the truth without bothering about him losing his own freedom. Salman al-Farisi, the seeker of the truth. The Prophet ﷺ was happy that his companions listened to the story. <clears throat> now Salman al-Farisi has won the hearts of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ with such a zeal and determination to find the truth no matter what it takes. So the Prophet ﷺ told Salman al-Farisi, free yourself. So he went to his master and he said to him, I want to free myself. After some negotiations, his master agreed to free him if he grows for him 300 date palms and if he gives him the price of 40 ounces of either gold or silver, the narration doesn't really specify. And that was such a huge price. But for him, it was to free himself and dedicate his time for the sake of Islam. So he came to the Prophet ﷺ very happy and he said, I agreed with my master on this. So the Prophet ﷺ said to the companions, help your brother. And here where the Muslim Brotherhood really shows its beauty, where the Muslims helped Salman al-Farisi and soon after he was freed and he became a free person and he helped Islam in so many occasions. He was one of the greatest companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he was loved by the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the hero of the battle of the trench because when the kuffar of Mecca, they were thousands who were now coming to Medina in order to attack the Muslims. There was no way 
that they were not going to be entering Medina Munawwara. But Salman al-Farisi was one of those who said, Oh messenger, in Persia, when the enemy comes and we want to block him from coming, we used to dig a big trench approximately 10 meters by 16 meters. And we used to make sure that they cannot even cross the trench so they don't enter the city at all. So let us do it. And subhanallah, that was adopted by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hence, it is called the battle of the trench. Why? Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu, it was his idea. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirmed it for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the young man from Persia. He has a story with Abu Darda radiallahu anhu. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu was another companion whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had asked Salman al-Farisi to live with when they came into Medina Munawwara after some time. So Abu Darda'i radiallahu anhu, he became the fostered brother of Salman al-Farisi. Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu notices the wife of Abu Darda radiallahu anhu. She took no interest in dressing, no interest in any appearance, no interest in food or anything else. So he asked her, what is the problem? So she answered him saying, you know, your brother Abu Darda, he finds no need in this world, nothing, nothing at all, which means he's not interested in his wife. So Salman al-Farisi waited for Abu Darda at night. And when the night started, he began to read long salah. Salman stopped him and told him, you know what, go and sleep. So he went to sleep. A little while later, he got up again. He says, go to sleep. A little while later, he got up again. He says, go to sleep. And when the third of the night was remaining, Salman got him up and said, now if you want to pray, you may pray. Then he said, oh Abu Darda, remember, your body has a right over you. Your wife has a right over you. Your family has a right over you. Everything has a right over you. You must fulfill the rights of absolutely everything. And you don't have to overdo it when it comes to acts of worship of this nature. So Abu Darda radiallahu anhu listened to him because he was knowledgeable, but he went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Hey, this is what happened between me and Salman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Salman has spoken the truth. You must fulfill the rights of your family members and understand that too is an act of worship. May Allah make us from amongst those. Salman al-Farisi at some stage became the Amir of Madain. Madain is an area in Iraq and he was the Amir but he did not change at all. The stipend he used to get on a monthly basis made up of approximately 5,000 coins, he used to give it all away. When they came to build a house for him, they knew that this man does not want a big house. So he asked the builder, what type of a house will you build for me? The builder says, something that will shade you from the sun, protect you from the cold. When you stand up, it will hit your head. And when you lie down, it will hit your feet. That's how small it will be. He says, yes, now you know me. That's the house. And that is what they built for him. And he was the Amir of Madain. On one instance, he went out and there was a man who had come from a sham. And what happened is that man was carrying belongings and, and a lot of goods. So so Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu was the Amir, but they did not know this. He offered to help the man and he started carrying the goods. And this man says, oh, thank you very much. Jazakumullah khair and what have you. And as they're walking, they met a group of men who greeted him as the Amir, the governor of Madain. And they told him, assalamu alaykum, oh Amir. So this man from Asham looks, he says, who's the Amir? They looked, they said, the man who's carrying your goods? Subhanallah. This was Salman al-Farisi, a simple man. It is reported that Subhanallah, one day he was cooking and baking. So the visitors came to his house and they said, where is your girl, the girl who works for you? He said, no, we sent her to do another task. And I am a person who does not give two tasks to the same person. They will do one thing at a time. May Allah grant us goodness. On his deathbed, he was crying. And when he was crying, Subhanallah, he asked for something. And his wife brought it to him. In it, there was musk. He said, when I die, I want you to spray this musk on me because the angels who come to take us, they love a good fragrance. He passed away in Al-Mada'in and he was buried very near to Baghdad. Up to this day, his grave is there. He passed away approximately at the age of late 70s, some say 78 years old at the time uh, of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. And it is reported that Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu attended the janazah. Wallahu alam, Allah knows best. But this was our hero, Salman al Farisi radiyallahu anhu. May Allah grant us a good lesson. Very interesting video. First of all, um, sometimes our parents are so strict that they keep us from good things in life. They 
may sometimes keep us from um, learning new things, discovering stuff, or just living life. I guess that was how the beginning was. Uh, but for Salman, it's like he wasn't even overshadowed by... He didn't want to stay in one place and wanted to go out there and explore. And he didn't let his father's... It, and and he didn't let his father's security keep him from moving on in life because some people are comfortable okay my parents are providing everything i have everything that i want in this house i don't have to go out there and look for anything else because i want to be comfortable for the rest of my life but here's a person that's showing us that he had to move out of that comfort zone to find what he was looking for and once he found it he was very comfortable again and was enjoying life through this newfound friends uh the lessons the new religion and at the end of the day since he believed he ended up meeting the prophet and i guess that was a big win for him let me know what you guys think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video